1 Corinthians chapter 12, we're going to read the first 11 verses. I'll be reading out of the New King James translation. Full disclosure, I'm going to, well, let's just do it. It says, now concerning spiritual, I'm going to stop there because gifts was added. In the original manuscript, the word gifts is not there. But the, those who were attempting to get us to understand it better put that in there, but it's not in there, and therefore I'm not going to read it. Now concerning spiritual or the spiritual, brethren, I do not want you to be ignorant. Paul was very passionate about those who were under his tutelage not being ignorant because ignorance is not bliss. Now concerning spiritual, concerning spiritual, Brethren, I do not want you to be ignorant. You know that you were Gentiles. He's talking to the church of Corinth who were very much influenced in Greek culture and Greek methodology and all of that sort of stuff. And they were carried. He says, you know that you were Gentiles carried away to these dumb idols. Dumb, not that they were stupid per se because they were nothing. They didn't have any personality. They were nothing. They couldn't be stupid because they were nothing. But that word dumb literally means they did not have a sound. They were without sound. They could not speak. They were lifeless. No sound came from them. Carried away by these soundless, nothingless idols, however you were led. In other words, you made it up. And then he says, therefore I make known to you that no one speaking by the Spirit of God calls Jesus a curse, and no one can say that Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. He's level setting. And then it says, there are diversities of, and the word that was translated there is gifts. A better translation of that word is gratuity, an endowment, a grace. And we're going to get into why that's important in a minute. There are diversities or varieties, is a better translation, of gratuities or graces or endowments, but the same spirit, say spirit. spirit. There are differences or varieties of ministries, but the same Lord, say Lord. Lord. And there are diversities of activities, but it is the same God who works all in all. It is the same God, say same God. Same God. Spirit, Lord, God. Paul's very intentional as he's writing. In other words, I want you to get this right. I want you to understand what this is. He says, but the manifestation of the Spirit, a better translation of that word manifestation is expression. But the expression of the Spirit is given to each one for the profit of all. For to one is given the word of wisdom through the Spirit, to another the word of knowledge through the same Spirit, to another faith by the same Spirit, to another gifts of healings by the same Spirit, to another the working of miracles, to another prophecy, to another discerning of spirits, to another various kinds of tongues, different kinds of tongues, to another the interpretation of tongues. But one and the same spirit works all these things, distributing to each one individually as he will, as he wills. My theme for tonight is heaven's resources for earth's dilemmas. Heaven's resources for earth's dilemma. Holy Spirit, here we are. And we've come here for you. We acknowledge, Lord, that without you, we can do nothing. And some of us have tried to do it without you. God, tonight we want you to speak to us. We came out here tonight to be edified, to be built up, to be filled up, God, to be strengthened, to be equipped, to be prepared. Lord, we don't want to move about in this world, in these times and seasons, ill-equipped. So God, we want you to stir us. Stir us tonight. 
quicken us in a fresh and profound way. Hallelujah. And God, I thank you for the spirit of wisdom and revelation and insight and knowledge. God, I thank you that you are filling me with the Holy Ghost to overflowing, God, and not just me, God, but I thank you, Lord God, that you're quickening every person under the sound of my voice in the building, online. You're giving them capacity, God, for this word, Lord God. You're expanding their insides. You're expanding their head. There's a calling on their life. There are things for them to do and to get the very gates of hell will not prevail. So God, we trust you. We're going to flow with you. I bind and break every distraction. If I was the enemy, I wouldn't want them to get this word. I thank you, Lord God, that they are open and alive and ready, that this word will not fall short, that it will not return until you void, but it's going to take root and bear fruit, and we're going to be better leaving than we were entering. If that's your word, shout glory in God's house. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. God bless you. All right, all right, all right, all right. Let's get into this. You may be seated. Let's get into this. Hallelujah. I love Paul. I love Paul. I, I, I don't understand how you can be that prolific, that profound, and yet that humble. I, I don't get it. And one of the things that you will notice about Paul in his writings is that Paul despised ignorance. There's a, there's a saying in the world, ignorance is bliss. No, it is not. That's not the Bible. The Bible says that my people actually are destroyed for a lack of knowledge. And when you study Paul's ministry, Paul is trying to get those that had come to Christ to realize what they had. Because a lot of people get Christ but don't know what they got when they got Christ. Hey, can I talk to you tonight? Yeah, yeah. I got Christ, watch this, but I have to grow up in my understanding of what I got when I got Christ. Because I got more than what I thought I had. This is one of the reasons why we commune. The purpose of communion is to stare at the cross afresh. <laughs> Do this in remembrance of me as often as you do this, you do show forth the Lord's death. Why would the Lord want us to stare at his death often? Because if you look at his death, you will see what died. Feel the Holy Ghost. In other words, we can have, watch this, ghosts living in our lives, disrupting our lives, stealing from us, rob, steal, and kill from us, not because we're not saved, we just don't know what we got when we got saved. So, so, so Paul is passionate because he realizes that if you don't know what you got, then you're already being stolen from. Because one of the things that I've learned about the enemy is he thrives and feeds off of ignorance. And that's why Paul in rebellion would often say, we are not ignorant to your devices. In other words, I'm on to you, devil. And you know what? I'm not afraid of you, devil, because greater, come on, is he who is in me than he who is in the world. I messed around and read my Bible. When he says that God has given to us power over all the power of the enemy and nothing by no means shall hurt me. So it is important, oh God, to not just know you're saved, but know what you got when you got saved. And that's why Paul is level setting early in this text by saying, now listen, you can't even say Jesus is Lord unless you got something. So the very fact that you are able to say 
that Jesus is Lord means that you are doing so by a resource that will change your life. When God saved you, he gave everything to you that you will need everything, as Peter says, that pertains to life and godliness. I feel the Holy Ghost. Somebody shout, I got something. God did not shortchange you. Sometimes in life, we can feel like we got shortchanged. When God put his spirit in you, in one injection, he gave you everything. He gave you the source of it all. Oh, God, I feel it. And so Paul, Paul is saying, look at here. Look at here. If you're going to walk this thing out, I need you to know what you've got. But I got to break it down for you because the church of Corinth was a church that maybe knew a little bit of what they had but didn't know why. And there was carnality as well in the works. So, so let, let, let's talk about it. Let's talk about it. So he starts off, I'm, I'm going to go verse by verse. So he starts off saying, first of all, he says, now concerning spiritual. Now, why did I disrupt the text or disrupt the New King J James translation by pointing out that that word gifts is not in there? I did it because when you read in this particular text, he points out nine what we call gifts of the Spirit. The reason why I point out that that word in right there when it says spiritual and then we put gifts is not in there is because I want you to understand that there are not nine gifts of the Spirit. <laughs> there is only one gift and the Spirit itself is the gift that expresses itself any way he chooses. I feel the Holy Ghost. And this is important because, because there's some people in here and you're like, well, they got the gift of working miracles. Or they, they got, you know, they got the gift of, of prophecy. I don't have that gift. They, they, they got the gift of prophecy. I, I don't have that. They got the gift of discerning of spirits, right? Discernment. I don't have it. Because if you don't understand this passage and what it is saying, you will think that when he says, and I give one this, you will think he's saying, I give one person this, and I give another person this, and I give another person that, and I give another person that. Well, let me ask you a question. Why would God not want you to be able to discern spirits? Why would God only want you to be able to do that, but you can't do that. Oh, why would God want you to be able to speak in tongues and consequently edify yourself, but not want you to speak in tongues and you can't, so now I can't be edified because somehow I wasn't, I didn't get the raffle for tongues. Can, can I talk to you? So what I'm doing is I am attempting to to demystify and to, to tear apart the framework, watch this, of ignorance that keeps us from recognizing that if I've got the Holy Ghost, I've got it all. Now you might say, well, well, PT, you know, I hear you, but man, that person over there be flowing in it. You know, I can't do that. I, they flow in it, I don't. Usually, it's because they believe they can. <laughs> Ain't no difference between you. God is not like that. They just have a belief maybe because they do it often, because they experience it. No, 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 no. We're going to come out of here tonight. Knowing what we got, oh, I feel the Lord. And we're going to start trying some stuff. 
some stuff that we, we thought that we couldn't do, we're going to start trying it, and you're going to see God move. I, I gotta, let's work through this. Let's work through this. There are some interesting things in the text. It says there are diversities of gifts. That's, that's graces. There are a variety of graces, but same spirit. There are varieties of ministries, but the same Lord. And it says, and there are varieties or diversities of activities, but the same God who works all in all. Isn't it interesting that Paul injects the Trinity right there in those verses? Because what Paul is describing, watch this, is the fullness of God. He is beginning to paint a picture of fullness because, because some people are more inclined, watch this, because of your relationship, you're more inclined to Jesus. So when you pray, you don't necessarily pray our Father, right? You pray because they're all one, but you, you pray, you know, Jesus, I just come to you right now in the name of Jesus. I just come to you right now in the name of Jesus. And some of you be like, Holy Spirit, come. Come on, somebody. And because of your comfort and your familiarity, we oftentimes have more of an affinity to one or the other. And so what the Lord is doing is he is doing a sweep and he's getting everybody and he is saying that this resource that I am describing, however you roll, however you flow, I'm covering everybody because this is about fullness and I need for you to know what you got. I feel the Holy Ghost. Nothing lacking. Nothing lacking. I feel that. Nothing, nothing lacking. So, 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 so. So then he says in verse 7, after he says there are diversities of activities, but it is the same God who works all in all, then he says... But the manifestation, in fact, that word but can be also. It actually makes more sense because but, you know, and that's why you got to study because everything, you got to look at it deeply and see what's understanding because this particular word is a Greek word and it can mean but, but it can also mean also or and. So if you see it in this context, because but would somehow negate what was said, there's nothing to, there's no argument in this text. It is all aligned. So I believe it says, or better reads, and also, let's further this conversation. The manifestation of the Spirit is given, watch this, to each one for the profit of all. It's given, so, 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 so uh, we, we can't, let's get out of this gift business. Now, you may have the gift of singing, right? The gift of communication. That's cool. But when it comes to spiritual things, there is only one gift. And it is the Spirit, and the Spirit manifests or expresses itself, watch this, intelligently according to the will of God. I don't need to express myself in tongues in your life in this moment if what you need is a healing. And they say that better. I'm not going to express myself, watch this, in a word of knowledge if you need a word of wisdom. So there is a highly intelligent process that is taking place that is controlling watch this the distribution of the manifestations of the spirit that you have in you and we can't manipulate it or control can I teach tonight we can't manipulate it or control it that word ignorance and Paul says, I would that you, I don't want you to be ignorant. It's the Greek word, agnoio, agnoio, ag, or a, which is not, and noio, which is to perceive and to understand. So, so he's saying, I don't want you to not perceive or to not understand. 
The word also has the idea of to exercise the mind, to exercise the mind, meaning that when we are awakened to the Holy Spirit and that we have access to the Holy Spirit, we are awakened in a particular way that our mind begins to work, that there's a working in our mind, God divinely working and moving in our mind. And also when I was reading that, that word ignorant, it also has this idea of, and this, is, this really caught me, it also has this idea of to ignore through, this is an interesting word, disinclination. In other words, when I am ignorant without knowledge, I watch this ignore things because I'm not inclined to seek the Spirit. I, I need to say that better. That, that, that's important because I have to do life with precision. Feel the Holy Ghost. You are, if, if you just look at your body and look at how precise you are, you're not random. Everything in you is calculated and methodical. So everything, watch this, on the inside of you says even the small details are important. Down to the neuron. Even, even the small, down to the atom. Even the small, the small, the molecule, the smallest part of you, down to the details. You are made up, watch this, of specificity. Feel the Holy Ghost. Your whole shape your whole wiring, everything about you has specificity to the extent that your fingerprints are yours and yours alone. And if this is the case, if this is indeed our makeup, watch this, then our movement should have specificity. I, oh, I forgot. I ought to live technically. exercising of the mind, the Holy Ghost. If you are, and I'm going to get to some things in just a minute, I just, I want to be free. The Holy Ghost, if you will allow the Spirit, will make you technical. What does that look like? Technicality can look like timing. Knowing the difference between the right thing and the right thing at the wrong time. Oh, I feel the Holy Ghost. N knowing the difference between the wrong thing and the only reason why it's the wrong thing is because it's the wrong time. But, but being, having that level of specificity and technicality, that's what God is trying to bring you to. And it comes through you mastering your relationship with the Spirit. Can I talk to you like this tonight? Because, because your calling and your anointing is going to put you in a place where you're going to have to have a funeral for randomness. If it ain't the Spirit, it ain't me. I feel the Holy Ghost. There's some people in this room and God is getting ready to do a work in your life. And the work in your life is that he is getting ready to allow you to walk in the Spirit on a whole new level. I feel the Holy Ghost. There is, here we go. There are things, there are things that have access to you right now because you are not walking in the Spirit. Turn me up in this thing, please. There are some things that have access to you, that have access to your life, that has access to your mind, that has access to your finances, because you are living in a realm that is too low. And I hear God saying, I am getting ready to elevate you. I am getting ready to lift you up. I am getting ready to set you in seated in high places in Christ and the enemy won't anymore if that's your word holler at me real quick I know what I'm talking about I know what I'm talking about you about to go up in the spirit okay okay I gotta calm down I gotta calm down you remember John 
when he was on the Isle of Patmos and he was having an encounter with the Spirit. The Spirit was wooing him. The Spirit was drawing him. And he said, the Spirit said to him, come up here. Check the book. He said, come up here. And it said, and immediately I was in the Spirit. The Spirit is a realm. It is a dimension. It is home, baby. It is your safe place. It is your happy place. It's when you become you for real. It is that place where you know who you are. It is that place where you know who God is. It is that place where truth is commonplace. And I wish a devil would. I feel the spirit of God come up here, says God. Oh, we're going to get this. 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 That's what Paul is talking about. Paul is saying, there's more to you than you think. Being in the spirit is not just yabba dabba do. You become a bad boy when you're in the spirit. You become a bad person when you're in the spirit. If you need a word of wisdom, no problem, baby. I got you. If you need a word of knowledge, no problem, baby. I got you. If you need to prophesy and speak to the mountains, I got you, baby. If you need gifts of healing, I got you. You got to see this. You got to see this. So you thought that those things represented a whole bunch of people. Ah, uh -uh. no, 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 no. Those are expressions of one person. And if you think about Jesus, who modeled this, he flowed in them all at different times. Are you hearing me? Put your hand on your belly. Say, I got it. 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 I thought I was missing something, but I got it. 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 Stir it up, bop, bop, shop, bop, bop. Stir it up. Stir it up. I feel like coming down there, talking to two or three people. Stir it up. I got it. I got it. I got it. You ain't missed nothing. I got it. 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 That's all me. It's all me. It's lift your hands. You got it. 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 God brought me here. He brought me here tonight to let you know that you got it. If you've opened up your heart to the Lord, then you got it. And let me tell you something. This is not about your personality. This is about his. It's not about your personality. I got it. I got it. I got it. I got it. I believe, family, as I look at this world, I was... I had to do a staff retreat in California. And I was talking to the, the senior pastors of the church in California. And I said, am I going crazy? Or is the world getting crazier? I said, you know, is, it, is, it, is, I said, is the media just, are they sensationalizing cray cray? I said, because I, I didn't know, because, you know, you can't trust it. You know, I'm like, look, because it seems like, in particular, this mental health thing. It seems like it's, it's worst. And I asked one of the pastors, 
We have a senior leadership team in L.A. And I just oversee it. I'm here. And I asked one of the pastors on the senior leadership team. I said, is, is it new? Is, I said, is it just, are they sensationalizing the crazy? And she said, oh, no, PT. She said, it's different now. It really is different. She said, it's mental health, but there's something on top of it. There's something on top of it. And it's making, see, mental health doesn't mean violence. Oh, come on, come on, come on, come on, church. Come on, church. You got to go with me. You got to go with me. Mental health is not synonymous with violence. But this expression that we're seeing now is violent. So I gathered my, I mean, they're doing all kind of crazy stuff. So I gathered my leaders and, I, and, and watch this. I'm going to be honest with you. A conviction fell over me. A conviction fell over me. Because if I'm honest, I had a sense of helplessness. I felt, I felt helpless to, to do anything about it, if I'm honest. And then it dawned on me. Helplessness is not an attribute of the Spirit. Oh, fill the Holy Ghost. Because the Spirit, it says we saw it. That's the fullness of the Godhead in one thing. And will express itself with the power of God. Which means that I cannot be in the Holy Ghost and feel helpless simultaneously. And family, I got convicted. Because, yeah, we're, we're feeding and we're doing outreach and we're doing all of this. But if I'm honest, I felt to a certain degree detached from that problem. That's for the counselors and that's for the psychotherapists. And, yes, they have a part to play. But the issue is bigger than that. And even if... It wasn't my fight. We at least should be praying. But God began to speak to me. And he said, no, 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 no. The reason, see, see, what if it wasn't just the mental health, but what if there was some of the demonic sprinkled in there? Can I talk to a church? Okay, I'm not a therapist, but I can drive out a devil. How much of, listen, I know that we have done crazy things and called everything a devil. And that's off and untrue and ridiculous. <laughs> but there are some things that are. And if, I, and if I pull back from anything from, that looks like it can potentially be a mental health issue, I, will, I would have abdicated my responsibility as a kingdom citizen to drive out devils. Maybe that's where the discerning of spirits comes in so that I don't have to wonder what I'm dealing with. Can I just talk to you about how I got convicted? Here's what I'm saying. Eight minutes and we're finished. Here's what I'm saying. I'm saying that there is a measure of the Holy Ghost that is coming to the church. A new fresh outpouring of the Holy Ghost. We were confused in 2020. We were a little trying to figure out who we were in 2021. 22, 2022, we were trying to get it back, but I believe that we're going to emerge in 2023 knowing what we have, walking in what we have, walking in power and victory and clarity. If that's your word, if that's you, if you are ready 
for a fresh, oh God, a fresh pouring of the Holy Ghost. I dare you to take about 18 seconds and worship God and call on God like heaven will fall if you do. Come on. Oh yeah. Uh-huh. Yep. 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 Family. That whole chapter, you got to study it all when you get a chance. There are two gifts, two expressions. I got to stop saying that. Two expressions of the gift that I need you to pay attention to. Because I believe that if you get these expressions of the gift right, you're going to get all of them right. The first manifestation or the expression of the gift that I want to tell you really quickly, there's just two. And then we're going to pray about that second one. Where it talks about faith. It talks about faith. One of the expressions, one of the manifestations of the Spirit is faith. This is not salvation faith. You know, there's a difference between faith in Christ and the faith of Christ. Feel the Holy Ghost. Feel the Holy Ghost. Christ had ridiculous faith. You have to bring him, bring him, just, just see through his humanity for a second. Christ had, come back down and talk to you. Christ had ridiculous faith. He had the type of faith, when you get a chance, I want you to study this. This is in 1 Peter, the, the first chapter, I believe. Uh, they're going to tell me in just a second. It's in the Bible. I promise you it's there. But there's a, there's a passage of Scripture, and it's 1 Peter. That's the one that I gave you. But anyway, I'll tell you what it says. It talks about the type of faith that, watch this, receives the end of a thing in the beginning. Hear me, I, I, got, I, got, I, got, I got to do this, I got to do this. Just study when you get a chance. It, it's, a, it's not salvation faith. There's a level of faith that gets you saved. It's belief, it gets you saved, right? This is a different thing. This faith, this faith is experiencing what is hoped for while it is yet still being manifest. Find that verse for me. Find it, because I want to read it. This is important. That's why I have to go back up here. It's okay. Let me tell you something. We can wait. There's this. I'm just going to read it to you real quick, because it's important, and we need it. Okay. That's in my wrong thing. Okay. All right. You know why I ain't up there? Because I didn't give it to him. I think I did, but I don't remember. Let me tell you what it says. It Peter is talking about salvation. I believe it's 1 Peter chapter 1, starting about verse 3. Yes, here we go. It says, blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Real quick, I'm gonna get, I promise I'm going to tie it all together. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who according to his abundant mercy has begotten us again to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, right? So that's salvation. To an inheritance incorruptible, undefiled, and that does not fade away, reserved in heaven for you. Bishop talked about that. It's reserved in heaven for you, right? Who are kept, the, who, this us, who are kept by the power of God through faith for salvation ready to be revealed in the last time. It says, in this you greatly rejoice. You greatly rejoice. You're in it. Though now for a little while, if need be, you've been grieved by various trials. That happens sometimes, if need be. Sometimes we need what is developing us. And more than developing us, it is developing our faith. I could stop right there. I could stop just for a second, but I, I want to go somewhere. What if what I'm going through is not about punishment it's not about I'm not strong enough or I'm not whatever enough what if it is about doing something to our faith because our faith means more to us than we realize 
What if that's the case? That the genuineness of your faith, the authenticity, oh, I feel the Lord. The authenticity of your faith being much more precious than gold that perishes. In other words, your faith is extremely valuable. That's why it's always under attack. That the genuineness of your faith being much more precious than gold that perishes, though it is tested by fire, watch this, may be found to praise. Wait, hold up. Your faith can be praised? What? Wait, 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 wait. My, thrushy, my, my faith can be developed in such a way that God praises my faith. Now, it shouldn't throw us off too much because you see Jesus in the Bible praising faith. Oh, I ain't never seen no faith like that before in all of Israel. Oh, girl, I ain't even got to move. Your faith just did it. Not faith in Christ, the faith of Christ. His faith, perfect faith, watch this, you're about to see it, that experiences, it is so pure that it experiences what you hope for even before it's manifest. Oh God, I feel it. And that's one of the expressions of the spirit that is in you. But, but watch it. It says, it says, though it is tested by fire, might, may be found to praise, honor, and glory at the revelation of Jesus Christ. Now watch, watch this. And again, this is for context. Let's go to verse 8. Whom having not seen you love, though now you do not see him, yet believing, watch this, yet believing, watch this, you rejoice with joy inexpressible. I, I'm talking about faith that is an experience. I feel God. Somebody is getting ready to get healed. Your heart, see hope deferred makes the heart sick, but true faith, perfect faith, the faith of Christ will heal it with joy inexpressible watch this and full of glory and full of glory receiving the end the end of your faith now Faith is the substance of things hoped for. It is, it, it, it is the substance. This is in you. It is the sub, faith, watch this. If faith is the substance of things hoped for, then faith is what is hoped for. Oh, you got to catch it. <laughs> this is why the enemy doesn't want you to have faith or not to have perfect faith. Because when you don't have faith, you don't have the thing. Because faith is the substance of what you're hoping for. So if you fumble the faith, you fumble the thing. But if you hold the faith, you keep the thing. This is a word for somebody. Tie it all together in just a second. This is a word for somebody. Tonight, you are no longer going to vacillate back and forth over what God said he was going to do. That has to stop it is not helping you it is hurting you you have anxiety because of it you are upset because of it that thing watch this that God caused you to desire I'm not talking about name it and claim it I'm talking about having a relationship with the Holy Spirit. You have delighted yourself in the Lord so much that he begins to give you the desires of your heart. 
Did you hear what I just said? I didn't say he gives you what's in your heart. He gives you, he appropriates your desire and causes you, according to Philippians 2 and 13, to desire what he wants to give you. It's back to Bishop's message. The Spirit helps our infirmities because the Spirit knows what to pray. It searches the hearts and the mind. It searches you. It knows the will of God. It's all tied in. There are things that the Holy Spirit has caused you to desire that if you will get out of your head and activate the faith of Christ, you will have joy and be full of glory. So much so that when it shows up, you won't even shout because you already did. Oh, I wish somebody would catch what I'm saying. There are things that I believe God for, it shows up, I'm all shouted out. Because I received the end of it, I'm believing for something. I feel God. I'm believing for something else now. That's in you. And if you allow that manifestation and expression of the Spirit, the faith of Christ, you will flow in all of the others because the only thing that is keeping you from a word of wisdom and the word of knowledge and the working of miracles and the gifts of healing and the graces to heal and 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 the working and 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 prophecy and tongues and the interpretation of tongues the only thing keeping some of you from that is that you didn't know it was for you Why would God not want you to prophesy? Paul said later on, I'm going to land in a second. Paul said later on, I wish, I wish you all spoke in tongues, but rather that you prophesy. Why would the spirit to say, I wish you prophesy if you couldn't prophesy? Acts 2, in the last days, I will pour out, he's quoting Joel, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, upon the old and the young and, and, and men and women. And you shall prophesy it is in your identity to prophesy it, it, it is a divine mandate because there are things that God wants to produce in the earth and he's waiting on your mouth to be the conduit to do it I'm way outside of my notes. I got four pages of notes up there, and God said, whatever. But this other one, this last one. Tongues. Tongues. Can I tell you a story real quick? Then we're going to pray. I, I used to, I was raised in the Baptist church. And Baptist church, you get kicked out of the church. Talking about some tongues. Now, everything got to be done decent and in order. Now, listen, I, and let me tell you something. Honestly, I can't think of a better foundation to get than the Baptist church. Better found, I, in my estimation, I can't, I'm so glad that that's where it started for me. The commitment to the word of God. Come on, let's talk about it. The commitment to the word of God. You, you, d d I'm glad I got that. But you ain't going to be speaking in no tongues. Now, that's changed. I know great leaders that still, but they're, they're like Pentecostal type Baptists or whatever. There's a new move in the Baptist church, thank God. So now you got that solid foundation and you got the gifts of the spirit. And that's just, come on, that's word and spirit. It's just, that's on a whole nother dimension. But that's not what I got. I didn't get that. And I was exposed to other ministers and I was, you know, TV preachers and they were speaking in tongues. And I ain't going to lie. I want to speak in tongues too, but for the wrong reasons. Felt like I'd be cool if I spoke in tongues. And, and Pastor Michael, I was, 
I was in the mirror one day. I said, I'm going to get this tongue thing worked out. I'm, I'm going to get this tongue thing. I'm, I'm, I'm going to get it. I'm going to get it. I'm going to get it. And I, went, and I was in the mirror, and I just said, okay, we're about to go for it. You ready? Yeah, I'm ready. We, I'm talking to myself in the mirror. You ready? I'm ready. We're going to go for it. And I was just yabba-dabba-doing. <laughs> All from here. Yabba-dabba-doing. And, and I got like one little, one little thing that sounded kind of cool. I think it was like shika or something like that. I got one little, one little, one little phrase, and I'm like, oh, I got something. I'm working with it. <laughs> And in my heart of hearts, I knew it was just absolutely ridiculous. What are you, what are you doing? This is ridiculous. And I knew it. And, and I just, I, so I let go of my little shika. And all I had was a shika. <laughs> and, uh, and then one day, I, I let that go. And I just said, God, whatever you have for me is for me. Whatever, whatever you have for me is for me. And one day I went down to pray in English just to worship my God. And to pray in English, to pray with my understanding. And I opened my mouth, and a flow came. And I've never been the same. And what is crazy is, what I did not know in that moment was that a weapon had been formed against me. A weapon that had been formed against my family. And I didn't know it. And, but once the smoke cleared... And, and God dealt with it. That's why the spirit came. Because remember, it's not really about me. It's about protecting me. There was another time when I was on the freeway. I was driving my car. I was on the freeway for work. And I had to drive a great distance. And all of a sudden, the spirit of God filled the car. And I just started speaking in tongues. As the spirit gave utterance, speaking in tongues. And I pull up on an accident that had just happened, a horrible accident. And I said, oh, my God. The scripture talks about there being divers or diverse various types of tongues. There, there are tongues that are known language. On the day of Pentecost, when the spirit of God fell, those were tongues of men. Those were known languages, right? But then Paul talks about, and you'll study when you get a chance. I got it in my notes, but we're here now. But Paul talks about in 1 Corinthians chapter 14. Well, no, in 1 Corinthians chapter 13, he talks about if I speak with the tongue of men and of angels. And he's speaking to a heavenly language, a heavenly language. Another place in the next chapter. So if you read your own work, is to read 1 Corinthians 12, 13, 14. In 14... He talks about when he prays in an unknown tongue, not a known tongue, but an unknown tongue. He edifies himself. He says he's speaking to God, one, and he's edifying himself. Over in Jude chapter 1 and verse 20, he talks about building yourself up in your most holy, watch this, faith. Praying in the Holy Ghost. I want to say to you who are here and those of you who are watching, you have it. If you have received Jesus, you have received the Holy Spirit. You have the Holy Spirit. Now there is a baptism of the Holy Spirit. And that is when you, via hunger and thirst, not because you want to look cool or sound cool, but because you want heaven's resources to appropriate into your earthly circumstances. He will fill you. There's debate about whether or not tongues is the evidence of speaking in, or tongues is the evidence of being filled with the Spirit. And I don't know where you stand and, and whatever. We can, there's certain things we're going to be arguing about until the Lord comes back. That was not my experience. I believe that we all should speak in tongues. But I believe that the, 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 the highest evidence of you being filled with the Holy Spirit is that you can prophesy. Speak forth and prophesy. But tongues is for you. I want to do something tonight. 
Why would you not want to edify yourself? Why would you not want to build yourself up? Paul says, I would that you speak in tongues. And Paul later said, I speak in more tongues than all of you. We need this. So I want to do something. For where God has taken us as a movement, we all need to be speaking in tongues. We all need to be prophesying. We all need to be moving. And I'm not talking about, I'm not talking about fanaticism. I'm not talking about being weird. Because being weird is weird. That's corny. Being weird and blaming it on the Holy Spirit. Don't do that. Because the Holy Ghost is not weird. The Holy Ghost is like Jesus. And Jesus was not weird. I believe that, that this is a time for great resource. Our bishop is setting it up. He's setting it up. He's setting it up. And we need this. I don't know how to pray, but I pray in the spirit. And when I pray in the spirit, I know it's all good. I know it's all good. So I want us to stand real quick. If you're watching online, I want you to get in on this. And I want to pray a prayer. I want to, I want to release something. I know many, this is Spearfield Church, and we've been on the bishop for years, so I know many of you, this is elementary. But even if it is elementary, I challenge you to pray in tongues more. More. And if you got the tongue things down and you don't need to up that up, I challenge you to receive faith in the rest of them and move in it. I'm looking at this crisis and I'm thinking to myself, my God, it dawned on me. It's your issue, PT. Oh, I thought it was for the scientists. I thought it was for the, for the psychiatrists. No, we may work hand in hand. But any issue of dysfunction and chaos in the earth is a kingdom issue. It is a kingdom issue. And pay close attention to issues that seem to be out of control and no one has answers for. You know why they don't have answers for? Because it's not their issue. It's ours. But we can't do it without resource. We can't do, we can't even heal our families without resource. So my prayer tonight, my prayer tonight, is that we would distract ourselves from the things that are distracting us. I hear Matthew 6.33 so loud in my ears. If you seek first the kingdom and his righteousness, all other things will be added. Jesus says in Matthew 6.33, he says, take no thought of what you're going to eat or what you're going to drink or what you're going to put on. And then he says, is not life not more than that? He says, take no thought. In other words, don't be anxious. Take no thought. To be anxious is to take thoughts. He said, your heavenly father already knows what you need. I feel this. Because in order to get this divine resource, you can't be selfish. Overly consumed with your issue as if God doesn't already know about it. You're saying, God, please take care of my business. And God is saying, no, 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 you take care of mine. If you take care of my business, yours would have already been taken care of. Hallelujah. And in order to take care of my business, you need my stuff. You need my substance. I feel God. When you look at 1 Corinthians 12 and all those expressions, I look at that, watch this, and I cannot find a problem that one of those expressions won't solve. If you got issues in your marriage, sometimes you need a word of wisdom, right? The Bible says, husbands, dwell with your wives according to 
knowledge, understanding, wisdom. I see healing for marriage in there. Discerning of spirits, working of miracles, prophecy. I cannot think of one problem in the human experience that cannot be remedied by the fullness of the Spirit. Now one. So maybe what I need is more of the Holy Ghost. Luke 11, ask and you shall receive. Seek and you shall find. Knock and it shall be opened unto you. He says, if a son asks for this, will the father give that? If that, that, you know, study it. And then he says, well then, how much more? Watch this. Will I give the Holy Spirit to those who ask? The Lord deduces down to one resource everything you need no matter what you are asking knocking or seeking for do you hear the words that are coming out of my mouth divine resource heaven's resource for earthly dilemmas is the Holy Spirit and his manifold expressions. And if you get that right, you get life right. 